welcome to season one of the Mindfulness Pilates podcast. I'm Beverly Densham, Pilates teacher of over 22 years. I really look forward to bringing you tips to reduce back pain and feel good, relaxation, positive affirmation and inspiration every week to inspire you in body and mind for more relaxation, stretching, core, back strength and happiness. Okay, so big welcome to this week's podcast and really pleased to be joined today by Sam. Sam, do you want to say your, how you pronounce your name properly for everybody, please? <laughs> Kamir Chak. You always think of it. Think of Kamir Chuck and you're not half, you're halfway there. From her. Yeah, that's lovely. So I'm going to just introduce you a little bit about you. So um, and then we're going to talk all about your you know, mindfulness Pilates journey so far and you're running and all of those exciting things and marathon running and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, you're a financial advisor, which is wonderful. And you just said you decided that when you left the Navy in 2009, that you wanted to follow in your dad's footsteps and become a financial advisor. Um, and you said you started doing exams in your notice year and got a trainee position and you never looked back. <laughs> and you're personally you're a mum to two lively twins and enjoy running and you're currently training for the London Marathon uh, for the third time and you hope that you're actually going to get through it this time so big welcome yeah so how old are your twins they're four. Oh, bless the little console um <laughs> And so you said you are, your your big thing is that you're training for the London Marathon. So you said third time lucky. So how's that going? Not too bad, thanks. Yeah, I've still got eight months to go, so I'm just taking it easy. I've got a couple of half marathons in May, which I'm training for. And then after that, I'll start focusing on the marathon itself. Yeah, yeah, lovely. And so what inspired you to get into doing some mindfulness Pilates with me? I w- and we had a chat, um, your sister introduced us and we had a chat about finance and then you told talking about what you did and I was really, really interested. I've been doing yoga with Adrienne on YouTube for a while and I've always felt better after that, but uh, I hadn't done any face-to-face classes and uh, I thought, especially as you specialise in back pain and various pains and I was aching from head to toe pretty much all the time mm. a year ago and, and I'm really pleased I did yeah so how are you finding it um yeah so it's, yeah it's really yeah it's really nice that connection because you're now my financial advisor and my sister julie who's also been on the podcast and who listens hi julie <laughs> um we 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 all connected through um wibm which is women in business which is so lovely and you you said with all you had you're having aches everywhere so how's it helping with your aches and pains i'm still getting them obviously i'm only joined you a few weeks back but uh, yeah. when I was out walking today I was actually walking um, straight rather than having my usual head forward and the bobbing thing that I usually do which obviously puts strain on my neck and I used to get loads and loads of headaches so I'm finding even after a few short weeks that my posture is improving. Yeah yeah it's good because you're obviously really new to it as you said and um, you said um, that when you were young younger like when you were 12 but your posture wasn't so good either yeah I was unfortunately five for eight at the age of 12 and you can imagine everybody else was shorter than me and so I did what pretty much every tall kid does I'm not tall now that particularly as an adult but as a kid I was just hunched forward and trying to take up less space yeah yeah it's it's interesting because there can be different reasons for um children and teenagers start slouching it can be like with you it can be um it can be due to being tall for others like myself I ended up with that bad um, posture which is called kyphosis when there's a rat you go round shoulders but as you say you're like your your posture is shrinking I'm gonna some some of you'll watch on YouTube but you're like shrinking and your your posture just um shrinks forwards and that can be due to shyness so for me I ended up with that bad posture due to shyness um but other people it can be due to having a large chest they want to hide um, as they're growing and things like that there's so many different reasons 
that poor posture can come about. Some people are just finding in the pandemic, they're just sat there at the computer too long and haven't got a clue how to sit and are slumping and like slumping more and more the more they're there, which is not good. But um, yeah. So how, how do you find, because whereabouts in the world do you live? A uh, place called Campston, which is just outside Bedford. Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm in Dorset by the scene. The, the lovely thing is, is that we're, I work, my studio is always online now. So how are you finding it, doing the lessons online together I'm on Zoom? I'm really enjoying it. I was said to you from the first get-go, actually, that I was really impressed that even though there were about five or six of us in the class, you were individually looking at everybody at the same time. I don't know how you do it, actually, to be honest. And you were correcting myself and other people. And it felt like a one-to-one, even though it wasn't a one-to-one. So that, I thought that was very impressive. Yeah, it's, it's, it, to me, as a teacher, that's quite exciting. because I wouldn't do it. If I couldn't work in that way, I just wouldn't do it. Um, but it is exciting that you can make, I, can, I as a teacher can make sure I can see everybody and correct everybody and make sure everyone's working at the right level. And, oh, Sam, put your head back or <laughs> whatever it might be. <laughs> um, but it means you're doing it properly and in a good alignment and obviously you're then going to get the best out of it. Uh, but yeah, I just have to have my beady eyes on you all. <laughs> but it's it's nice though. Um, and you started off with your, you, you had a one-to-one as well, didn't we? We did, yes. Um, which is good. So how, in relation to your running and obviously you're, you're obviously going to be doing the London Marathon um, and you're building up to half marathons, how are you finding the stretching side of it helping you? It definitely helps me. I have an issue with my left hip, which you know very well. Um, so I have to stretch that quite a lot and um, having improvement with it. It's a long going process, but uh, that when that when my left hip goes and I start having glute pain and, and it can be quite agony to keep on running. So it's something I need to make sure that doesn't control my life again. Yeah, because you've had sciatica pain with it as well, haven't you? But um, uh-huh. you've you've had some sessions where you've you've done it and then it's eradicated that, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Or well, it's reduced it to enough of a level that I can keep on and run without pain. Yeah, so that's just you know fantastic. And you've now got your you've now got your so you're you're very good. You do some practice. Um, you now got your six minutes that you practice. And how do you find? practicing and what do you find the best time of day to practice and things like that I generally if it's up to me on my own I generally work and do it at night it's just a habit because of the twins when I used to just exercise when they were in bed because at least I knew that it would be uninterrupted and it's just a habit even though I have time during the day I generally do it as I say at night yeah so that works it does I mean, I encourage I encourage everyone to practice in the morning, either before breakfast or first thing. But for some, but for some people like yourself, you know, because of having you know young younger children, four year olds, and everything, um, family and business and stuff, and or just because that's just what's worked for you from when they're little. Um, for some people, I do find it good in an evening. Yeah, sometimes I manage it in the morning, but usually I forget. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> But it's good that you're doing it in the evening, though. So that is really good. That is really good. Definitely. And, and we actually, yeah, pardon. We actually managed to um, do one of your sessions. Uh, one of my classmates and I. It was quite funny. We had the iPad and the phone, so the phone was looking at the iPad, so she could follow along. <laughs> we did. It was great, and we had a bit of a natter afterwards. So a bit of a uh, as well. Yeah. So that's really nice because it's motivational, isn't it? It means you know you're showing. So did you do the whole? Because the lovely thing is my clients get um, a recording of the session as well as all their little six minutes um, to practice daily and stuff, don't you, as well as your one-to-one specifics. But it's lovely that you've met up with a friend from class today. Did you do the whole the whole class recording? So. Yes, we did, yeah. <gasps> That's so impressive. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Thank you. You get a well done for that. You get a well done positive affirmation for that. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> So in classes, it just might as well lead on to this now. In classes, I always, when you're stretching, pick your positive affirmation card message. So definitely you get a well done today. And it says, I did really well at something today. And then I always say to you, don't I, what does that mean to you that day? <laughs> so what does that mean to you, today, Sam? Um, I actually didn't do the class today, but uh, for Friday, I did. I, I was really glad that I got it done. 
and today I'm going to do the recording of the one-to-one -one session so oh that's amazing that's amazing a lot better yeah yeah it's amazing well yeah well done for that then that's what I say <laughs> so for you listening at home it's just a little opportunity for you to take this well done for you and like well actually it can be something small it can be personal it can be big it can be work related um just say well done to yourself and perhaps those you live with say well done to, for, to them for something as well might be really nice that's what I feel inspired to say about that one today um for me I feel like it's saying well done for doing a podcast <laughs> I don't sound funny but it seems to be helping people or inspiring people like um your friend that you meet up to do classes within class only only we've, we've been business friends for years but the only reason that she she came along to do the Pilates with me is because she'd listened to my podcast with my sister Julie New on it and that inspired her she said she said I've listened to your podcast I how do I book in <laughs> um so I kind of feel like I'm just want to say well done to myself for creating a podcast because um I wasn't planning to and interestingly maybe I'll have to invite Kate on sometime Kate and um, Kaylin is an amazing kinesiologist and um, it was after me doing a session with her afterwards I had the inspiration to create the podcast you probably didn't know that Sam did you no I didn't and I think if I hadn't have had that amazing healing kinesiology whatever amazing things Kate does in the session session I don't think I would have thought oh I'm going to do another podcast I've already got one I talked to Angel's podcast I think most people wouldn't go for like oh let's do two a week now no but actually, it just feels inspirational and um, it's so nice to connect and, and bring different people's takes on things. And, you know, I've always taught quite a few runners and I think, you know, different angles to how Pilates can help people. And you can, it, it's really important, I think, alongside cardiovascular exercise, such as running. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. So... Let's talk about the strength side now. Do you feel yourself strengthening? Because a big component of Pilates is strength and building strength, not just in the back, but the, everywhere. How are you finding that for you? Uh, as it's early days, not a huge amount of difference, but obviously the core work is starting to get slightly harder now. And yeah. I think every week it gets just a tiny bit more. So it's not... You wake up one week and you're amazing, amazingly strong, but I know that we're chipping into it. and It makes the sessions a lot less difficult, really, because if it was... I went to one Pilates session a long time ago and uh, I came out aching and, and in pain and I just didn't want to oh. go... Oh, okay, yeah. Because um, I think the thing is... It's interesting, isn't it? So you, I, don't, I don't know how how many weeks it is now um with you coming along it may be coming up to a couple of months but you have to build what the, the important thing is even if you're like a runner like yourself that's you know training for half marathons and a marathon you come along something like pilates which is either brand new or new you have to have you have to have good technique you have to have that strong foundation you have to have the core stability from the beginning and build the strength from the beginning and not um you have to get that right and then you can build properly mm. like a like a strong tree I often say like in class like it's, just, it's like you're a strong tree in your back and your pelvis is really strong but relaxed but very strong with roots into the ground and if you just skip through the basics and just whiz over to intermediate then you haven't got the deep strength so you're it was interesting when we did the one-to-one -one, you it was we will focus much more on the, the stretching and that side of it. And now we can start doing more strength building too, can't we? So that's good. Now you've got the, you know, those, that good, that good technique going on. Absolutely. You kept having to tell me to slow down. I remember. Yeah. You're going very fast, very fast. <laughs> ooh, ooh. <laughs> like, like <laughs> so fast. <laughs> so that's good. And you know, at the end of the day, you have to work on what you need and want to start with to get the foundation and technique right and then build from there. So, so that's really good. How do you um, how do you like the relaxation cycle? We, relaxation cycle. We start with one minute relax, relaxation breathing at the beginning, and then we do a lovely five minute relaxation at the end. How do you find that? Depends on the day. Some days I really struggle with it. Some days I love it. 
when I struggle, basically, my, my mind doesn't want to relax. It wants to think about all the things I've got to do today. And if my phone is wrong, who rang and things like that. And other days, I just go to a different place and, and it sets me up for the day. Yeah, I think um, that's really interesting you're saying that. Thank you for sharing that because I think I could be like that half the time too. And you might think, well, I'm the teacher and, you know, surely she can switch off every time. But no, that's the, I, often you teach what you need to learn. Um, and I think a lot of people will relate to that, Sam, because it's like, I think it's nice if you can just escape off to today, you're going to go to a beautiful forest and relaxation inspired by Sam. But he said, that's your favourite place to go? Definitely. Yeah, so you're going to treat you to a five-minute forest uh, relaxation today for you. Um, and, yeah, so it's cool. Sometimes people call it the monkey mind where the mind's just off on one. But even so, you will, even if you, your mind is wandering off thinking about other things, rest assured that it always does you a lot of good. Mm. You'll always still feel more energised. You'll always still feel more relaxed and calmer after it, though. Yeah. How do you find, because um, obviously one of the principles, or two of the principles of Pilates are relaxation and breathing. So throughout the whole of the session, whether you're stretching, whether you're doing your core stability, and when you're doing your strengthening exercises, you're always breathing with it. How do you like that element of it for concentration? Yeah, definitely. And, and that kind of mindful breathing helps with my other activities, such as running. Yeah. Do you have a do you have a particular breathing you do when you're running? Not consciously. I did get um, one of my running buddies used to run with me when I was quite new at it, and he used to say in for th in for three out for three, and we'll do a nursery rhyme. I can't remember which nursery rhyme he talked about actually. Yeah. He says sometimes when because I used to struggle with breathing. I'm asthmatic, but very mildly, thankfully. But sometimes when it's cold air and things like that, I need to uh, really, really consciously breathe so that I don't start getting a tight chest. Yeah, yeah. Um, my my mum's my mum's big tip with. Sure, Sean. <laughs> it's okay. We don't mind dogs barking. <laughs> we don't mind. It's called cool working from home, recording from home. So um, my mum's tip with asthmatic is with breathing. As my mum was a pee specialist. My mum should be listening, uh, is to blow ping pong balls, that the exhalation is more important than the inhalation for asthmatics. And she used to get um, her students um, blowing ping pong balls across the table. Right. Um, so, yeah, it can be, we'll, we'll have to do a bit of that sort of breathing um, in classes for you as well, because it's, it's, it's quite good, actually. It's quite good. Um, so, yeah. So that's, that's good on the breathing. So have you got anything else you'd like to add or a takeaway tip for the listener today? I would say definitely sign up for a free class with Bev. Even if you don't go with her, she definitely um, will point you in the right direction. And um, yeah, I definitely say a lot of runners out there don't do anything like yoga and Pilates. And I think it's essential that they do to avoid injuries. Touch wood, yeah. never had an injury running, and I hope to continue that. Yeah, I think it is very, very um, important for injury prevention. That's something I, um, in my sports science degree, from having had a very sporty background myself, um, I was a squash player and runner and 800 metres and 1500 metres and cross country and all those things. And I was just ended up so ridden with injuries. Mm. And I didn't know anything about Pilates. I was told off, I was told at university, I'll oh, go to yoga and it did me in. So it didn't help me at all. Um, and, you know, it wasn't until more back problems in Australia that I discovered um, Pilates from um, physio recommendation. But yeah, so that's, a, yeah, it's a good tip, isn't it, for runners? Uh, if anyone's got injury prevention, as you say, it's complimentary, isn't it? To, Absolutely. Yeah. To your passion, it's, your, it's a passion of yours, isn't it, running? Yes, it is. Yeah. I never thought it would be. I only got into it because I had to, when I joined the Navy, um, we had to run. So I didn't run for more than two minutes without collapsing when I first started. <laughs> That's amazing. And then what, at what point then did it become, go from you having to do it in the Navy to enjoying it and then actually wanting to do it then? What was the switch for you? 
Well, in the Navy, because there wasn't very much else to do, I used to go running with my uh, boss. We used to go running around uh, wherever we were, were in the world. And we enjoyed that. We even went running in 30 degree heat together. So yeah. and obviously you have to keep up your fitness in the Navy. So it became a habit. And when I left the Navy, I was sort of doing park run. Oh. Up for 10 Ks. Then I took a bit of a break and had the kids. And then after I had the kids, it was, okay, I'm going to be able to do a 5K again. Okay, now I've done five. I'm going to do 10 and carried on from there. Did my first marathon a few years ago. Wow. Have you done the London Marathon before? No, no. So I was meant to be doing my first uh, last year. Yeah. Where did you do your other marathon then? Manchester. Aha. Uh-huh. Very boring. <laughs> oh, wonderful though, wonderful. <laughs> It was an amazing achievement, but the scenery I thought was very dull. Oh no! One of my great friends in Manchester. <laughs> Got a very nice canal there, though. Very nice canal. I've seen it in the pictures. A lovely snow recently. Oh, well, well done with all your running, and good luck with Reno with the London Marathon and everything. And for those of you who who want a financial advisor, Sam Sammy Piggy. So, what's your website, Sam? It's www.essendonfp.co.uk. That's lovely. Thank you. I'll put it in the notes as well with the podcast. Well, Sam, thank you so much for coming today. We're going to we're going to delve next into a beautiful um, five minute forest relaxation for you. Oh, and um, yeah, anything else you want to do today before we go? Yeah, I think we'll do we'll do our angel card after, unless you fancy doing one now, Sam. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so um, clients, when we're doing, when you're doing your stretches, you you can choose between a positive affirmation from the Happy Kids cards, like and I pick you on, um, say we've got the well done one, or you can choose an angel card in class. So we'll do this for you listening and us. <laughs> so best message today. These are from my angelic meaning cards. Best message today. It says open to your intuition. It says be open to your intuition. Breathe in through your nose, out and out through your mouth. Relax and listen to the guidance you receive. And then you, I always say to you, don't I? What does that mean to you? So at home, for you listening, what does that mean to you? Sam, anything that pops to you that you want to share? No, it doesn't mean much to me today. So I'm going to have to think about it. Yeah, I think it's more the well done for you one to you say, isn't it? Yeah um yes yeah, so have a think about what that means to you at home uh for me i just um i just love following my intuition of who to invite next on the podcast or um what author to interview or what i'm what i'm going to bring in um that's going to help my clients more this week it's just it can just it's whatever it is for you that day but that's what pops into my mind right now and I said to Sam before the podcast today, didn't I? I said, oh, where would you like to go in relaxation? And then you said the forest. So it's like, oh, gosh, I must ask Sam because where would you like to go? So I really hope you enjoy um, going into relaxation and meditation together next. Thank you, Sam, so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. Uh, lots of love to you all. And uh, let's go into meditation now. Welcome to the forest relaxation Close your eyes, sitting or lying down. Get yourself really comfortable and breathe and relax. Either placing your hands on your heart or wherever is comfortable for you. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth, relax. And in your mind, you're going to escape and just really enjoy a beautiful forest or wood. And you're just going on this beautiful, beautiful walk in your mind through these gorgeous, gorgeous woods and terrain. The birds are singing, the air is so fresh and you just feel so at peace with nature. And just breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And ahead of you, you see these beautiful steps and it's like you can see clearly now and that all is well in your world. You're surrounded by these beautiful trees and the temperature is perfect for you. 
the sun is rising and as you climb up the steps easily and effortlessly in your mind, you reach the top and feel really accomplished and as you gaze one way, in the distance you can see the sea through peeping through the trees and as you gaze the other way, it's the most beautiful, beautiful light of the sunshine rising and rising at the beginning of the day. It's oh so beautiful, it's kind of gold and light. It's not too bright, it's just the perfect amount of beauty of the sunshine that you can gaze at here. As you breathe and relax, you're gazing now at that beautiful sun, glistening through the trees over this other side of the woods. And just breathe and relax there. And just stay still as you just are in awe of this beauty of the sunrise. You are on the right path and you just feel so supported and surrounded by so many beautiful colours of nature, the green and the golden, golden colours of the sun and there's blue in the sky. I just love hearing the birds singing. There are clouds in the sky floating along by. Allow your thoughts to float on by. And just breathe and relax now. With the natural rhythm of your breath, in through your nose and out through your nose, relax. And now breathe naturally. And enjoy this for another 10 breaths in and out in your own time. breathe and relax and just daydream here in this beautiful surrounding and know that you can go here anytime you like it's very recharging you feel like your batteries are recharged you feel replenished you can blow the cobwebs away and rejuvenate you feel so serene and your energy levels are increasing as you breathe and relax in these beautiful surroundings. As you gaze up at the sky, you gaze from the sea on one side, the trees and the scenery to the other side, gazing at the sun rising in the golden ray of the light, and up towards the clouds and the sky, blue and white. Enjoy. You are relaxed and you are wonderful. At the end of meditation, just take a breath in or yawn. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And again, deep breath in or yawn. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. And roll your head side to side. After relaxation and meditation, you might, might like that, have a little stretch. When you come up sitting slowly, just circle your shoulders a few times backwards. Shrug your shoulders to ears and relax your shoulders, happy shoulders. Have a lovely glass of water and perhaps a cup of tea. Sending you lots and lots of love. Really hope you enjoyed today's podcast. How are you feeling after the relaxation? Isn't it just a beautiful place to go? I mean, it, today it was a forest or woods. Uh, wherever you particularly wanted to daydream and go to in relaxation stay. How do you feel after that? It's really nice to actually dedicate the time to that and not be multitasking, <laughs> cooking, cleaning, uh, whatever it might be, work, etc. It's lovely to just switch off for those five minutes, take yourself to, you know, a lovely, um, quiet spot 
wherever you are and enjoy it. Um, I must say I do multitask quite a bit when I'm listening to podcasts, but during relaxations and meditations, it's just so I, I do dedicate that time. So I really hope you do too, because um, it really does help recharge the battery. It's one of my favorite places in the world, actually going to the woods. So I hope you enjoyed that magical time together today. And uh, yeah, big thank you to Sam for being on the podcast today and sharing about her marathon running and her very beginning of her journey uh, with mindfulness Pilates. That's really lovely. And uh, yeah, it's been a, a really nice, it's been a really nice week on that side of things and constantly introducing um, new clients as well, like Sam to mindfulness Pilates, which is really important work. Um, but very special too. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for coming today and uh, you look forward to seeing you on the podcast next time. Lots of love to you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mindfulness Pilates podcast. Please rate and review on your podcast platform. You can access my free healing meditation and Pilates to ease back pain in three minutes on my website. You can also book your reduced back, back pain to feel good one-to-one -one Mindfulness Pilates program on Zoom or Mindfulness Pilates membership by going to mindfulnesspilates.com.